Hello, my name is Guillermo Gallego, and in this video, I will give an overview of cameras working on event-based sensors. In this slide, we see uh, a map of the world with different dots representing hardware companies developing cameras. Uh, as we know, event-based sensors, or the silicon retina, it was initiated by Misha Mahawald and Carrie Mead in Caltech, so California, in uh, around late 80s, beginning of the 1990s. And what happened is that in around 1995, the Institute of Neuroinformatics was established at the University of Zurich and ETH Zurich. So many people who were in Caltech, they moved to uh, Zurich, such as Professor Toby Delbruck and colleagues. In Europe, there were also, at the beginning of the 2000s, there were some projects such as the Caviar project that um, were instrumental in developing event-based camera technology. Um, so there are some spin-offs of the Institute of Neuroinformatics, such as Inilabs, uh, they are working on R&D prototypes of the sensors. InsideNess, also in Zurich, they are um, developing um, the technology uh, for drones and augmented reality and uh, innovation. So a lot of people who were initially in Inilabs, then they moved to Innovation Zurich, and this is um, working on industrial application on automotive. That's in Zurich, then where they are developing the DBS and the Davis. So the DBS, the dynamic vision sensor, and the Davis is the, um, um, is the DBS plus an APS sensor. So the dynamic and active pixel vision sensor. Then in France, we have uh, initially Chronocam, which then became Prophecy, and they are developing uh, their own event-based cameras called the 80s. Uh, there is also Pixium Vision Paris, working on retinal implants. And then in Asia, we have in South Korea, Samsung Electronics, which is uh, working on uh, the DBS together with uh, the people in Zurich. Um, and um, Celepixel which is, uh, was originally in Singapore and then it moved to Shanghai. And they are also working on event-based cameras. This is a table of the actual devices, the event-based cameras, a comparison of several uh, commercial or prototypes of these sensors. And this table you may find in a recent uh, archive paper uh, called Event-Based Vision, a survey that I've been working on for the last couple of years with colleagues in the field. Um, this table, uh, the numbers are just approximate because there is no standard measurement testbed for all of them. So let's go through uh, the table and give some um, explanation about it. So on the row co columns, we see the different uh, devices or cameras. And on the rows, we see the different uh, properties or characteristics, specifications of, of the sensors or the camera. So the first three columns are the ones from uh, for the cameras from Innovation. So the Davis 128 is the original Davis in the seminal paper from 2008. And it has a pixel resolution of 128 by 128 pixels. Um, and it has only the event output. It has no grayscale output, no IMU. Um, but the good thing is that this uh, sensor was the first commercially available, I would say and it has a nice connectivity to computers using the USB cable. So it was Inilabs who was able to put this camera um, available for people who were requesting it around the, the world and developing uh, novel algorithms for these sensors. Um, then um, we have in 2014, we have the Davis 240, which has a resolution slightly bigger to 40 by 180 pixels. And it has several improvements over the DBS. So it has uh, a few more transistors per pixel, which allows to give some grayscale output in the form of frames. So this device, the Davis 240, has events, frames, and also an IMU uh, providing um, angular velocity and acceleration at um, one kilohertz. And then this one here is the Davis 346. Uh, so it's uh, from three years ago, a resolution of 346 by 260. 
and it's an evolved version of the Davis 240. And then we have the prophecy sensors. So we have the 80s. It's a sensor developed in 2011, and it has a change detector, which works like a DBS. And it also has grayscale output. And the grayscale output is not in the form of frames, but in the form of grayscale events. Then more recently, in 2017, there are two sensors, generation three um, of the change detector or the 80s. So the change detector has only the uh, binary events and, and an IMU. And the 80s has slightly smaller resolution, so not VGA, but 480 by 360. Um, but it has the change detection events and grayscale events and the IMU, and that's this guy here. From the cases, they are they are very similar. It's inside that that changes. And recently this year, there was a, a paper just uh, published um, showing the generation four of the sensor of the change detector. That's what CD stands for: change detector with one megapixel, with a very small pixel like. 4.86 micrometers. Um, and it's able to produce up to like well, 1,066 million events per second, which is a huge amount of events per second. The next columns show the models by Samsung. So we have generation two, three, and four. Uh, two is from 2017. And two and three has VGA resolution, so 640 by 480. And the pixels are are small, and they don't have grayscale output. The generation three has a IMU and slightly better events. And recently, also this year in 2020, um, Samsung published the one megapixel event-based sensor. Um, yeah, it has uh, 1,200 million events per second as an output. The next two columns are select pixel uh, sensors, so CELEX4 and CELEX5 from 2017 and 2019. And yeah, the CELEX5 is the first event camera to have 1 million uh, pixels. And it has the events, the grayscale output, uh, but it doesn't have an IMU, I guess. And the last column is uh, uh, Rhino 3 from Insightness. It's uh, similar to the Davis. It has uh, events, uh, grayscale frames, and an IMU, and it's quite quite small for very portable applications. So as you can see, event camera hardware is getting mature. It has uh, evolved from the original DVS-128. Now we have one megapixel cameras, three of them actually. And what happened with the pixel? Well, it has been decreasing from 40 microns to now 4.86, 4.95 microns. Um, the dynamic range more or less stay high, so around 90 dBs or above. The latency is also in the order of uh, tens, hundreds of microseconds. And the field factor is the part of the pixel that has actual active um, um, surface to transduce light. So the uh, photodiode, it's uh, like 8.1% the part of the surface of the pixel that is uh, useful for converting photons. And it's going from 22%, yeah, 8.22 to more than 77 if you stack them, which was the, this is Gen 4 of the prophecy sensor. So there's been an evolution of the event-based sensors, not only producing the change detection or the binary events, but also allowing some grayscale output and maybe combining it with an IMU for other applications. This is a list of references. So uh, there is in the, you can find them in the list of event-based vision resources, has a section on devices and manufacturers and another one on companies working on these cameras. Uh, this is the website of Innovation and AI Cortex of Inilabs, Samsung Electronics. They have now the, uh, the DDS on a commercial product called the SmartThings Vision, which uh, uh, is very similar, I guess, to the Gen 2 or Gen 3. Um, 
Prophecy. This is a website, and the Gen 4 has been developed in collaboration with Sony. So this sensor, Gen 4. Insightness uh, was recently acquired by Sony, and uh, yeah, this is the website from SolarPixel. So this list is not exhaustive, right? There are many prototype event cameras that have not been commercialized, and there will be more. Uh, companies under the radar working on event-based vision technologies, but uh, they don't say or I'm not aware. Uh, you may check out the partners of the above companies. I'm sure they are developing technology together. Um, I think so. that's it. Thank you very much.